Tipping past the challenge, Vasquez! It's the knockout stage and the League's Cup is heating up. Nashville in town at the Fortress and the Bailey ready to battle tonight. Is a double date with Lionel Messi in the cards for later this month. It's trophy hunting season and the orange and blue has their eyes on championships. Cincinnati, here we go. Good evening, everyone. He is Tom Galerder, the Emmy winning Tommy G. Congrats. Thank man. you. Appreciate that. Yeah, Fun was, night. Congratulations was, to WCPO. We are very proud of the award that we won. The best of the best right here at Channel overall, 9. Overall excellence. Everybody around here is very, very proud of that. Of great course, night for everybody. You and your, your, your squad had a great night as well. Appreciate it. I'm your host, Caleb No. This is the pregame edition of FC Cincinnati Weekly as the team gets set to kick off against Nashville. Tommy, that is just minutes away. I know. It's going to be a fun one, right? Third time this year these two are going head-to-head. -head. It was a big battle 20 days ago. League's Cup rolls on tonight. And FC Cincinnati have never defeated the same team three times in the same season. They have the opportunity to do that tonight. Move on to the round of 16. They know they're at home if they win that. If they win that, they know they're at home. They're going to be at home for a while. That's a good thing. But first things first, you've got to get through Nashville a once again. A chance to beat a good a, a, a team three times. We're talking about a very yeah, good team. Yeah, very good team. One team. of the best teams in the conference. We'll talk about that a little later on the show. First of all, group play wrapped up earlier in the week. FC Cincy did not play, having secured the top spot in their group already. But the other two teams did. Sporting KC took on Chivas Guadalajara in Kansas City. Tommy, 90 minutes of soccer. One goal, it's all KC needed. Happened about a half hour into the match. Here. Yeah, listen, and uh, both teams had players suspended from their matches against FC Cincinnati. So both a little bit shorthanded for this one, but Sporting Kansas City, a bit of that home field advantage. And I think people kind of figured that Chivas would go into Kansas City and easily get a win. And that Chivas would be the number two team out of the group because we knew after the FC Cincinnati Chivas uh, two-day affair yep. that that they couldn't win the group, but uh, they didn't they didn't win at all. They're they're back home right now. And look, uh, a big disadvantage to the League MX teams not being at home at all during this tournament. But I give Sporting Kansas City credit and a beautiful goal to get the winner. Yeah, just couldn't couldn't find a goal. Chivas Guadalajara just couldn't find the net. Uh, Sporting KC walks. Uh, Sporting KC is a team that's playing well. Yeah, they found their way. form. Yeah, absolutely. Look, they were on hard times to start the year and uh, were a bit of a mess. But they they we talked about that on the game coming in uh, to the one against FC Cincinnati that they finally found their form a bit. That they have looked better. And uh, they showed it because now they're alive in League's Cup. All right, so look at how things shook out in FC Cincinnati's group. The Central 3 group, less than dramatic for FC Cincinnati. Two dramatic matches, mind right. you, but a relaxing ride into the knockout stage as the good guys take the group. Yeah, I like that, right? Uh, not too much drama. Not having to watch that match was nice. It was a little bit yeah. late on Monday night. You know, we're yeah. going to have a late night tonight. I needed to get my beauty sleep It just didn't earlier matter. in the week. And there yeah, were no, scenarios. it didn't. It didn't matter at all for FC Cincinnati. There were scenarios perfect. where it would have and Correct. where FC Cincinnati would have been watching that match. Right. Like, hoping for a specific result, but that's just not how it played out. You did. Nope. If you're an FC Cincinnati fan, you may or may, may not have even watched that game. Yeah, right. You took care of business. You were more concerned about the match going on in Colorado between mm -hmm. the Rapids and Toluca to find out who they're going to play. It was almost certain that it was going to be Nashville tonight, but you had to wait till that one played out, I believe, much like all the Leagues Cup games. There was a weather delay <laughs> that, that pushed back the start <laughs> of that one. Yeah, yeah, real I mean, quick. We've seen that a lot. All right, so the knockout round started Wednesday night. We saw Lionel Messi play a full match for the first time with Inter Miami since making his debut after, <laughs> you know, what oh, a mean, long weather a delay. weather delay, right? <laughs> yep, another match. We got things underway. It's a Florida derby. Orlando taking on Miami, and it didn't take long for the GOAT to find the goal. Seven minutes in, Tommy, he slips right into a pocket in front of the goal. You just can't leave No, come that on. Guy. Somebody get on number 10. Yeah. Like, I guarantee he was in the scouting report. <laughs> Don't leave him open inside of the 18. One would imagine. Yeah. Uh, what would they call Pedro Galese, the octopus, right? Uh, he could have all eight <laughs> arms, and he still was not saving this shot from point blank range. It wasn't even that far off of his left there arm. There are no but, defenders in that shot. Look no, at that. And, and, that's, and that's the issue, and I think it uh, left a lot of people scratching their head. Um, and, and Miami continued on, and, and Messi, of course, gets another. Yeah, just, it, just incredible to see what he's already done in his time with Miami, and then the fanfare surrounding him, which is it's, not shocking. It's no. not surprising, but the attention around him and around that team, mm -hmm. a team that's frankly not been very good up to no, this point. No, they've been terrible this year. This They're in last place yeah. 
in the Eastern Conference. So they I have a lot of work to kindly, do. But you're right. No, that, that, look, that's the reality. But now they've won three games with him, all in the League's Cup. They have not yet left Southern Florida. So they're going to go on the road now for the first time. They're headed to Dallas for that round of 16 game where I think the heat index is supposed to be yeah, about 105 degrees for the match. That's a little different than the heat in Florida, right? The humidity yeah. is one thing. That dry Texas heat sure. is a whole other ball game. And I'm not saying that means that Dallas is going to win, but it's also his first time traveling in Major League Soccer, traveling in America, staying in the hotel. All of these little factors that come into play. So it'll be interesting to see, do they continue to roll through this tournament? If Miami and FC Cincinnati continue winning, they would have a date on, <laughs> on, on the 19th August in the 19th. final and the 23rd and in the, the Open Cup semifinal. Right. So presumably, the Herons would just kind of stick around town and Try to find a grassy, grassy knoll. Maybe somebody let them train on somewhere. <laughs> That's right. Somewhere around town. But, uh, yeah, don't, it, don't it, it is very intriguing. We've got to get through it tonight first. All right, back to FC Cincinnati. With four goals in group play, Brandon Vasquez finished tied for the most goals of any player in group play. Barely had three minutes to warm up against Chivas. Ended up with that many goals in the match. Not to mention another one in that match against Sporting KC. Again, four goals for Brandon Vasquez in the two group play games. Yeah, Caleb, he is locked in right now. And anybody who thought he had a slow start to the year, maybe so. 14 goals now for club and country. I talked to Pat Noonan on Thursday, and I asked him about Brandon. He said, yeah, we're seeing Brandon just like what we saw last year. Now, if you're the rest of Major League Soccer and you're looking at FC Cincinnati with 11 games left, you're going, holy smokes. Yeah. You're a little nervous that Brandon Vasquez is playing like he was playing in 2022 because with him and Aaron Bupenza, there's going to be a lot of goals for the orange and blue, and that's a good thing. But you mentioned not a lot of time to lock in as a starter because he wasn't supposed to start this match. Sergio Santos had tightness in his hamstring. He was went into the locker room. Brandon comes out at the last minute with his kit top on, and I kind of look at Kevin. I say, there's been a change in the starting lineup. Well, worked out with one of the most unconventional hat tricks of all time. Sure. Two <laughs> with the house full and one with nobody there. Yeah. It was bizarre, uh, but it's part of the deal. It's and how, doing how it, it in a variety out. of ways, too. You saw one of those goals against Chivas being at the right around the top corner of the 18. Two of the goals you saw there in that video were something that people are, are starting to talk about some with Brandon Vasquez now where he does the he makes the run right toward the goal gets the he just stops yeah and he, the defenders keep going he gets the cross and he puts it right yeah and, and it's another trick in his bag right uh, of, of ways that he's going to try to score on these goalkeepers and uh, hopefully we'll see him get his fifth and at least cup play tonight all right it's on to the knockout stage which begins again right after this show Nashville is waiting for FC Cincinnati, let's take a look at your match preview brought to you by Tri-State GMC Buick. And uh, again, Tommy Nashville in town. Nashville's been a very good team this season. Played a close game with FC Cincinnati down in Nashville earlier this season. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple weeks ago, back up here at TQL Stadium, FC Cincinnati got that huge 3-1 win. July was a weird month for them because they were playing so well. They were hot on the trail of FC Cincinnati. They're not that far back now as far as the points in the table are concerned, but they won one and they lost one. They rotated their goalies between the two games um, and, and lost to a good Toluca team that, that carries on from their group. So uh, it, it's, it's hard to know what to make of Nashville. Remember the game we're seeing the highlights from right now? They didn't have their starting fullbacks, and they had two players sent off. Yeah. I, I promise you that in a few minutes the match will start 11 v 11, and guess what? Yeah. Uh, a Shaq Moore and, and Daniel Lovitz are, are back and available for Gary Smith. So uh, it's a little bit of a reset there, but FC Cincinnati's done well against this team. The the victory um, 20 days ago and then winning in their house back in March. So I think they should have a lot of confidence going into this match. Is this a team that you think FC Cincinnati just plays well against, or is it just the fact that FC Cincinnati, it's, it's another team? Another I think team they, they found they the success this year, this year right? And uh, it's a team that, that they've been able to score goals on. And, and normally, Gary's teams are known for not giving up a lot of goals. Right. Like, they're very, very stingy yeah, defensively. To score three and, against that team. Right, here and Joe Willis State. is one of the best goalkeepers in the league. And, and he's been very, very good. He probably deserved to be an all-star this year. Uh, was not. But, uh, any, you know, it, it's a team. FC Cincinnati, hopefully they have their number. Can they beat him for the first time ever, a club three times in the same year? We're going to find out in a couple hours. All right. You can listen to Tommy and his partner, Kevin McCluskey, tonight on the ESPN, on a ESPN 1530 or on iHeartRadio. And as always, you can tune into the home radio audio when you watch FC Cincinnati at TQL Stadium on your Apple TV MLS season pass. Thank you so much, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Three, two, one.
I'm done. <laughs> Next on our show, the impact of FC Cincinnati can be felt in many ways within the community. One way is now soaring across the sky. We will explain next. Hey, welcome back everyone to FC Cincinnati Weekly, just minutes away from kickoff against Nashville in the knockout stage of the League's Cup. Look, the team is soaring high so far this season, leading the Supporters' Shield standings, awaiting their semifinal match in the U.S. Open Cup, and now again in the knockout stage of the League's Cup. The only thing soaring higher is a bird, representative of so much in this country, and now here in Cincinnati, sharing a name with one of FC Cincinnati's key players. So we had the idea to just ask people if they would consider sponsoring the Eagle Cam and gave them an opportunity to submit a name if they also wanted to sponsor it. And we had a donor and he said that he had a connection with FC Cincinnati and he had been following Obi's story kind of since FC picked him up and was really just impressed with him as a player and knew a lot about him as an individual. And he said you really should consider naming an eagle after this guy. He sent me a new story from MLS.com. Our donor had talked about how he just played with such passion and such drive, uh, such tenacity, and those three words automatically, I said, That's, those are pretty important qualities to have if you're going to be an eagle. I think it's so cool. You know, at first it was like I didn't really believe it, but like today it looks so real to me and I feel much more beautiful more than I ever expected, seeing it like actually with my eyes and then having the feeling feels really cool and I'm excited. So they typically will be incubated and they stay in their eggs for like 35 days, so a little bit more than a month. And then compared to how long they stay in the nest, that's not a very long time. <laughs> Just come from a tiny little egg. And as soon as he locked onto the nest that didn't have Obi in it, I could tell he was excited by what was happening. And then once we saw Obi and Bonnie in that tree across from where the nest was, it, I mean, I felt it come off of him. He's like, oh, that's my eagle. And it was so exciting. It was really cool to uh, teach him about this bird, this raptor that he hadn't really been very familiar with. And getting to kind of build that connection between him and his namesake, Eagle, uh, it was really special. And I'm, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to do it. Really skinny branch that comes right out to the right of that. Means a lot because knowing fully well that it's not just for me now. It has to do more now with my family, Nigeria as a whole. People are hearing about it, they are asking me in Nigeria, they are asking me the stories, I have to tell the ones I know. So it's pretty cool to, for me and for, for my family back in Nigeria. Hey FC Cincinnati fans, TQL Stadium is the place to be and you can catch all the action next season, 2024 with season tickets. Place your deposit now for 2024 season tickets and secure your place in the fortress. You'll get tickets to all MLS games and have priority access to other competitions as well, like the U.S. Open Cup and other events at TQL Stadium. Save your spot for all the action. Get your deposit in now for 2024 season tickets at FCCincinnati.com. We'll be right back on FC Cincinnati Weekly. Welcome back to FC Cincinnati Weekly, the pregame edition as FC Cincinnati gets set to kick off in just minutes against Nashville. You know, next time you watch the team take a corner kick, we want you to know exactly what's going on, tactically speaking. So we take a look at the game winner against the New York Red Bulls in this week's episode of Talking Tactics. My name is Kenny Arena. Today we will be reviewing our winning goal against the New York Red Bulls. And this is Talking Tactics, presented by MedPace. The winning goal is our corner kick. Lucho Acosta is taking it. 
you'll see here we have five players in the box and Obi, who eventually scores a winning goal, starts outside the box. Okay, this is not by design. Obi being outside the box, then going in. You know, a lot of this play that you will see is just a bunch of guys trying to make a play to win the game. The organizational part, the tactic part is just getting numbers in the box and then whoever is picking up a ball outside the box trying to throw the cross in. So we'll take a look at what happens. Lucho puts in an in-swinger. Uh, for those that don't understand what that means, Lucho is right-footed. So when he takes this, he is curling the ball in with the inside of his right foot, uh, which typically puts pressure on the other team's goalkeeper. Uh, Yerson Mascara goes up for the header, forcing their goalkeeper to punch it. And Nick Haglund does a great job picking up the second ball. Junior Moreno, who was on top of the box, shows support to Nick and just prepares himself to put the ball back in the box. We still have a lot of numbers. Uh, I see at least five guys in the box still. Nick went out to get the ball, but uh, there's still four players left, plus Obi, who went back in. Junior puts in a great ball into the frame of the goal. And, you know, we highlight here uh, that four players are still within the frame of the goal. Uh, it's obviously uh, the best chance to score when the cross comes in. Just before Junior Moreno hits the cross, we highlight Lucho Acosta, who has now gotten on sides, but moved in and is ready to pick up anything that comes to the back post. As the cross comes in, it's barely too high for Yerson to get a header. Um, and as the ball gets through, there's Lucho, again, just like Junior, recognizing that we have four players uh, almost inside the frame of the goal. And we actually have a numerical advantage at the back post. He puts a good cross in, trying to find one of those open players. Their defender clears the ball, doesn't get it as far out of the box as he would have probably hoped. And Obi, who had been in and out and now is back in again, again, just uh, trying to make a play, does an incredible job taking this ball out of the air, uh, puts it in the goal. And, and, you know, for those of us that were there, the field was actually really hard. They had played um, a doubleheader Gold Cup game there uh, on the weekend prior to us playing and and. So I think when Obi hit this, there was some top spin on the ball and just the last bounce before it got to the keeper probably accelerated the pace of it a little bit. Uh, it went in and uh, as you can see, everyone's running, celebrating together. It was a great moment, less tactical, more guys just uh, being passionate and ready to make a play to win a game. And it's kind of what you, you always dream about as a player. So uh, thank you for your time. Again, this is Talking Tactics presented by Medpace. Thank you. Well, Major League Soccer's two Ohio clubs, of course, FC Cincinnati and the Columbus Crew, are holding the first Hell is Real Blood Drive competition. The drive started on Tuesday, August 1st, and runs through Friday, August 25th to see which club's supporters can donate more blood to help those in need. All FC Cincinnati fans uh, and blood donors interested in participating in the Hell is Real Blood Drive can visit any of Hawksworth's seven neighborhood donor centers from now, again, until August 25th. All donors will receive a, a complimentary Hell is Real Blood Drive t-shirt in FC Cincinnati colors. The winning team of the Hell is Real Blood Drive competition will receive a trophy co-designed by supporters groups from both clubs. The winning team will be announced following the blood drive. The next Hell is Real Derby is Sunday, August 20th. That's in Columbus. FC Cincinnati is looking for their first season sweep of the crew. FC Cincinnati fans, take your passion for the team to the next level with the official FC Cincinnati mobile app. Get instant access to match schedules, purchase tickets, stay updated with the latest news, and enjoy exclusive content right at your fingertips. Don't miss a beat. Download the FC Cincinnati mobile app today. The ultimate fan experience now right at your fingertips. We'll be right back on FC Cincinnati Weekly. Welcome back everyone on FC Cincinnati Weekly. Kickoff is just minutes away between FC Cincinnati and Nashville in the League's Cup knockout stage. 
Don't forget, you can tune into the home radio audio when you watch FC Cincinnati at TQL Stadium on MLS Season Pass with Apple TV. That is our show for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Join us here every Friday night at 730 for FC Cincinnati Weekly, the most comprehensive coverage of the orange and blue you'll find anywhere out there. For Tommy G, Tom Gallarder, and the rest of our FC Cincinnati Weekly crew, have a great night and go FC Cincinnati. There's going to be times when we have to weather the storm. The game's going to get chaotic. We can play direct. We can go for second balls, but we have to do it together. I trust each and every one of you in here to get this job done tonight. Striving at the Chivas defense. That's a wonderful tackle from the debutante Guti. One back by Pupenza. Vasquez sipping past the challenge. Vasquez! How is that for a start? 90 seconds in. Costa who's laying it off for Real back across the grade. It's a second for Brandon Vasquez. Just before the hour mark, lightning in the area will cause a weather delay. It'll take 30 minutes from the last lightning strike. Well, quieter than it was when we left off, but back underway. And right away from a throw-in, Chivas have pulled one back. A mind-blowing start to this afternoon's proceedings. As Vasquez continues his run, Kubo on his left, finds Barre out in the box. Vasquez continues! He's got the hat trick! A long and entertaining League's Cup debut for Chivas, but it's Cincinnati who punched their ticket to the round of 32.